How's it going everyone? My name is AJ and today I'm going to answer a fitness question. It doesn't matter whether you're 19 or 91, dull achy knee pain is something you very well might encounter. This particular pain is localized below the kneecap and tends to flare up when you put pressure on it via running, squatting, jumping, or doing any other function at the joint. What exactly is this? How did you get it? Is it dangerous? And most importantly, how do you get rid of it? I am going to answer all of these questions from a scientific perspective. Before we go any further, please support the channel by leaving a like, subscribing, and hitting the notification bell to ensure you stay up to date on new videos. In the physical therapy world, clinicians are familiar with this phenomenon known as patellar tendon tendonitis, patellar referring to the patella, and tendonitis referring to inflammation and swelling of the patellar tendon, located directly below the kneecap, connecting it to the tibia or shin bone. Just like any other body tissue, tendons are prone to injury due to sudden movement, overuse, poor body mechanics, or a combination of them all. In the case of patellar tendonitis, the most common mechanism involves excessive quadricep muscle contraction, in combination with the force of hitting the ground. Maybe you decided to run a mile after performing a max back squat. Perhaps you tried your hand at box jumps when you weren't quite ready yet. Or maybe you overdid it a bit on the basketball court, volleyball court, or any other sport that requires a lot of jumping. Because of this pattern, patellar tendonitis is also sometimes referred to as jumper's knee. Other risk factors, such as having tight quadriceps and hamstrings, muscle imbalances, poor exercise form, and chronic illness will also increase your risk of injury. Which brings us to this next question. How dangerous is patellar tendonitis? Is it time to hit the panic button? Simple answer is no at least not yet. Patellar tendonitis is a fairly common injury and will heal on its own, but it may take a while. Recovery time is anywhere from two to six weeks depending on the severity of the injury. Early intervention is key to speeding up the healing process, and this involves rest, ice, and appropriate mobility drills. Rest is arguably the most important of the three, but also the most difficult to enforce considering the urge to get back to work is usually somewhat high. Now I don't suggest stop stopping anything lower body related, but you should certainly keep an eye on your pain levels. Any activity that causes pain to go higher than 4.5 out of 10 should be put on hold for the time being. Icing the area is a good way to keep inflammation down as well, but should only be used early on. Once you pass 48 hours post-injury, heat is a more appropriate alternative. Proper mobility drills are also a great way to help speed up healing by promoting blood flow to the injured area. Gentle massaging of the patellar tendon and its surrounding structures like your quadriceps, hamstrings, and tibialis anterior muscle using your hands, a lacrosse ball, or other comparable alternative is a good place to start. Make sure discomfort levels go no higher than 6 out of 10 and keep the sessions in 1 to 2 minute spurts. If your pain gets significantly worse within days of the injury, I highly recommend seeing your doctor or physical therapist. There's a chance that you may have a full or partial tendon tear, requiring some form of invasive treatment or surgery. But if the pain is somewhat mild and you can still walk and move somewhat comfortably, trust the protocol I explained, be patient, and your knee will eventually heal on its own. Do you have any other aches and pains you'd like me to walk you through? Let me know in the comments below or on Facebook or Instagram. And if you enjoyed this video, be sure to like it, share it with your friends, subscribe, and turn notifications on. Thank you so much for watching, and stay strong.